Hello everyone at the Cisco Learning Network and hello to all of those viewers that are watching on our Stormwind Live blog site as well. Anthony Sequera here and I'm back to walk you through another multicast video. Just to kind of remind you of what we're up to here, we know that in the current CCNP track, unfortunately there's a bit of a lack of multicast information. So what we're doing is for the Cisco Learning Network, we are creating a series of videos that give a network professional level of understanding on this concept of multicast. In the last video in the series, we took a look at the components that you're going to utilize in a multicast enabled network in order to make all the magic happen. We said you need some type of protocol in order to have clients signal that they want multicast. We had to have some type of routing protocol for the multicast traffic. And that's going to be the subject in this particular video. We're going to look at that protocol independent multicast that we spoke of in the last video. And we're going to see right off the bat that it comes in some modes or what I like to call flavors of multicast. One of the flavors that we're going to talk about in this video is protocol independent multicast dense mode. Now let's back up for a minute. Protocol independent multicast. What does that mean again? It means this multicast routing protocol is not going to depend on any particular routing protocol for unicast traffic for its operation. We told you in the last video there used to be something called multicast OSPF and that relied on OSPF in order to route the multicast traffic. PIM, protocol independent multicast, no such reliance on an underlying unicast routing protocol. Okay, but what about this dense mode? Well, with dense mode PIM, it is assumed that every single segment is going to have someone that wants to listen to the multicast feed or view the multicast feed. So PIM dense mode is a push type of approach to getting the multicast traffic out there. It goes over every single segment. And then what happens is those segments that truly don't have anyone interested in the multicast feed will prune themselves off. Now this behavior times out in the default configuration. So what you end up getting with PIM dense mode is this flooding and then pruning off and then flooding and then pruning off. And this is one of the reasons why this particular implementation of PIM is no longer the most popular. Boy, that was a mouthful. A little bit of an iteration in there. PIM, popular, protocol. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at our sample topology, for instance, and play with some of this. You saw this illustration last time. So right down here, we have a multicast server, and that's sending out information. We've even got a client on the network that wants to receive this particular in information. Keep in mind that even though we have segments here with no multicast listeners on them, in the PIM dense mode of operation, initially the multicast traffic would flood out to all of the segments and they would have to prune themselves off. PIM dense mode is ridiculously simple to configure. We're going to be dealing with two commands. One, a global command of IP multicast hyphen routing to enable multicast routing on the device. And then under the interfaces that are going to participate in this dense mode of PIM, we're going to say IP PIM dense mode. Again, ridiculously easy to configure. Let's jump in right now and go to our R6 device where we have our server and let's go ahead and configure this dense mode environment. So we'll go down to R6 and our first command down there on R6 in global configuration mode, it's going to be IP multicast hyphen routing. And now we're going to go into the interfaces involved in our scenario and say IP PIM and we'll say dense mode. Now that's going to be one we want to copy to the clipboard because we're going to be using it a bunch here. You can see a quick status message saying, hey, I'm running PIM and I don't have any PIM neighbors yet. All right, no big deal. 
we'll save, and we'll move up to R5. So we're just going to bop from router to router here, and we're going to say IP multicast. Multicast hyphen routing, and then enter the appropriate interfaces, and we'll paste in the dense mode command from the clipboard. All right, now we're up to R1. IP multicast routing. Here we've got FA0 slash 0. And then we've got serial 00, zero I believe. Now, we're using frame relay in our scenario. So something that we need to think about right away is, uh, is the multicast traffic going to be supported in that frame relay environment? We can see we're utilizing frame relay here in this hub and spoke frame relay topology. Well, let's jump over to that R1 device and do our show frame map and we'll see that we're using inverse ARP in this scenario. And sure enough, inverse ARP by default is going to support broadcast or what we care about in this scenario, that would be multicast traffic. Let's just do one more because this is getting really boring. We'll go to R4 where in our diagram we have a client simulated that wants to uh, receive the traffic. And we'll say IP multicast hyphen routing, interface serial one slash zero, and our, whoops, IP PIM dense mode command. Okay, one great verification command that we have in our hip pocket here is show IP PIM neighbor. And we can see, sure enough, we have a PIM neighborship here between this R4 router and the R1 router. Awesome. So we have this neighborship and we could trace the neighborships like this throughout our entire topology for this PIM dense mode. But here's an, another awesome, incredible verification that we can do. In our diagram, we showed someone wanting the multicast traffic on this or off of this R4 device. So we can go in and we can simulate a client. We're going to get into the IGMP protocol in future videos, okay? But for right now, let's call upon one of these clever commands. We're going to go to, let's go to that serial 1 slash 0 interface and we're going to say IP IGMP join group and we can go ahead and pretend that there's clients now that want a multicast feed. Uh, let's say for the multicast group 239.444. So on this interface now, we're pretending that there are multicast clients interested in the multicast traffic for group 239 four, four, four. Awesome. So we're emulating the client in this particular scenario off of our four. Now, how can we emulate the role of the multicast server? Well, one of our favorite, favorite commands, ping, can do it. Sure, we can do a ping and generate, let's go down to where we have our multicast server in our scenario, supposedly, that is R6, and we can ping that group, 239.4.4.4. Uh, obviously, we can set a source interface. That would be one of our interfaces, obviously, that's running multicast. So we'll source this ping from FA0 slash 0. We notice in 168 milliseconds, we get a response. Who is that response from? 
10, 10, 10, 4. Yeah, it's that interface where we have a multicast client. How cool. So we have a way to simulate our clients as far as those components go that we discussed in the last video. We have a way to simulate multicast traffic with our ping and we are experiencing multicast in our network here, folks, uh, together. Now, one more verification command that I would like to show you in this video, and then in subsequent videos, we'll be exploring it in greater depth when we start doing like troubleshooting and things. Let's hop up to a router in the path here, like the R5 device, and let's take a look at the multicast routing table on R5. Show IP M route is how we look at the multicast routing table. And here we can see there is what's called an asterisk comma G entry for 239.444. There's also a S comma G entry, the specific source and the group for that particular uh, multicast group. We can also see in here there's this 2240140 address. This is a very, very important address that we'll be talking about next time when we talk about PIM sparse mode. So we can see the multicast routing table and we can see how there are this, this path information where every particular source will follow a particular path or just a specific source will follow a particular path. The dense mode PIM operation in its purest sense has every specific sender, in our case, the R6 device, following a particular tree for the multicast group. This is called an S comma G entry, and it's another reason why dense mode will be frowned upon due to all the overhead. Uh, one thing that confuses folks when they look at this is they say, okay, well, Anthony, if you're using dense mode and in dense mode, we follow an S comma G paradigm, why is there an asterisk comma G in the multicast routing table? And it turns out that Cisco will utilize that to generate its S comma G. So we will see the asterisk or star comma G even in this pure dense mode environment. So folks, I sure hope you have enjoyed our look here at one of the components, one of the critical components in our multicast routing infrastructure, and that is protocol independent multicast. Here we demonstrated the very simple to configure dense mode but we're a little sad because we know dense mode in its operation is going to be pretty inefficient. In the next video, we'll take a look at PIM sparse mode and we'll see how it's going to be a little bit trickier to configure, but it's going to be optimal for any multicast environment, really. So more on our protocol independent multicast in the next video. And as always, thank you so much for joining me here in this free series of videos that we're doing for the Cisco Learning Network, compliments of stormwindlive.tv.